Space to study for this <coughs> almost exactly the same thing, but that's the start of a certain place. Okay. You all have the book with all the questions and answers, right? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Okay, now, if you get to like page seven, that's where they actually start. Make sure we get to start the same page. And at the top of the page, it says supplement T1, CC rules, right? I went to page seven. Oh, your page seven is different than mine. Okay. No, it's like it's the first page. Oh, it starts. Let me see. Okay, it starts. Okay, I did. Okay, I give you a different version. Okay, good. So here's the whole point. Ready? Let's start right there. If we go back, if you also open your book, in the very first section. Okay, not the introduction, but section one. Keep the answer book open. Back out to what we teach. Okay, go to section one. Okay, now let's all go to the second page. Right there. Everybody there? You all there? Okay, now, you notice that this thing here says 1A01, 1A01. Now, what's been left off is the T in the technician pool. Okay. If you look in your question and answer book, though, you will see that there's a question called T. A01. Mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> so, you notice this one down here says A02, so that's TA02. Okay? Here's what you want to do. There's too many things to study in the question and answer pool, which is you don't want to just start at the beginning of the book and go, because we haven't covered most of the material yet. So, what I would highly suggest go through the charts that we've covered and just highlight. The questions that we've covered. So I'll put a check next to TA01, TA02, T1C10. All right? In other words, go through each of the pages on each of the sections and highlight, put a check mark next to T1C08, T1C. Okay, you get what I'm saying? Go through the first section, put a check next to those. Now, you can go through the second section, the third, the fourth. Every section that we've covered, put a check next to it. Now, here's what you want to do. That's number one. Because what you don't want to do is pick up this thing here and try to go through and review questions that we haven't covered yet. They won't make sense to you, okay? So with a check mark next to it, as you say, so, okay, I'll start here. Ah, ta one it's going to check next to it. Good. I'm covering something up, see? Read the question. Think about what you think is the answer. Read all four of those answers. See if you got it right. Now, if you got it right, what I would do is put a little mark, another mark next to the question. You don't need to have to come back and read that one again. There's 391 other ones, all right? But if you get it wrong, or even if you get it right, Put a circle around the letter that's the right answer. So in the case of T1A01, the right answer is said right there is D. See right next to that, it says D. So whether you guess the right answer after you read them or not, just circle. So let's assume that the first three or four of these, uh, you guessed the wrong answer. Okay, you went, but you went and read it, okay? Every, there's not, now here's two options now. One is, some of these answers sound alike. So the, what I suggest is the first time you read it, you read all four answers. Don't do that again. Once you circle the right answer, even if you got it right or if you got it wrong, the next time you come back and read that question, go only to the right answer, only to the right answer. Because if you have to go back in the next two or three weeks and read this one four or five, six times, you only want your brain to remember the one that you've been reading not the other ones. The only suggestion I have on the very first time is you read all of them, because some of them have a couple words that just sound almost alike, okay? So, we've already covered the first five and a half sections. Let's say tonight, let's say by the end of the day, we're up to section eight. Just start in section one, go through and start checking them off. And when you're just checking them off, just wait, wait to circle the answer. Don't circle the answers yet. Read through them, see if you can somehow guess what the answer is. Look at that. Yeah, I got it right. Okay, sure. Let's put an X mark next to that one. You don't need to read that one again. Okay? 
So every week that will give you a few more to study, a few more to study. Now, you know how we all have access to computers, don't you? Okay. Watch this. As we get farther through the test, I'm sorry, through the material, I'll say more than halfway through, if you will go to your miscellaneous <coughs> section, that's the last section in your, in your material, miscellaneous. The very last section in your book. You it. Okay, look at the bottom. You said miscellaneous. Go to the first page in the miscellaneous. Okay, now you notice right here, it says ways to practice. Practice exams on the internet. It's the second topic in that table of contents. So let's go down a couple pages. Okay, right here. Page six. So we've covered at least half of the material in this pool, maybe a little bit more. You can go on that website. Let me just open this up for you. You can go on the qrz.com website. You can click on site menu, you can click on practice amateur radio exams, you can click on start test, you can click on technician. And then you say begin. What it'll do is it'll put up one of the questions, all four answers, and you'll just click what you think is the right answer. If it's right, it'll go to the next question. If it's wrong, it'll tell you which one was the right answer, and then it'll go to the next question. You can sit there and actually take a, a 35 test online. And it'll give you a score. Now, obviously, if you've only covered half the material, you're not going to get, you know, probably more than 50 percent. But as we go on, you can go on, take it in, take it in, see your grade go up. Now, once we got getting towards the end of this thing or at the end, you will probably be getting easily over 75, 80, 85 percent, which will give you a good idea that you're going to pass the test. Okay. Now, there's certain things that are brute memory. They're memory, memory, memory. Here's a couple ways to do that. I'm going to go back to the chart here called Way to Practice for the Exam. Okay, but I'm going to go to the last slide. There's certain things that are just in memory. What you don't want to have to do is go back through all the question pool, all those pages of the question pool. Let's see now. Oh, that's a memorizing one. That's what not. You know what you do? You just put them on a piece of paper. One piece of paper. They're all in one place. And I wouldn't suggest studying those now for a test five weeks from now, I'd suggest you just simply put them there. But a few days before the test, put some of these in your mind, because it's, it's easy to just, it's all in one place. You have to go look for them, okay? Okay, with that, are we good enough? Yeah, I have one question. Yep. Um, on the test, the real test that you're gonna take, yep. so say I go to this first question, and D is the answer, is it in the exact same A, B, C, D, so I know that that first one is really, D is really the that answer? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Okay. <clears throat> yes, to the best of my knowledge. This, the, the printout you have is a copy of what's been printed on the FCC website. Okay. And, and quote unquote, what they use on the test. Now, when you take the test, there'll be some people sitting here. And they're, not the, they're probably not going to let you folks sit like you are now. They're We're going to be in the NPR. Oh, are you? Yeah, in our big room with yeah. tables. Oh, okay. Because they're gonna have you sit. Like, let's say you were using this room. You two could be here, but you'd be on the other side. Okay. Now, here's the next thing. I'm not going to imply that you're trying to cheat. They have eight or nine versions of the test. So when they give you one, it will not be the same one they give you. So question number one on your test will not be question number one on your test. Will not be question number one on your test. Okay. Just to make sure you understand, if you look at someone else's. They got a different version of the test, and their questions will be different. Since there's 392 questions in the pool, and there's only 35 questions on the test, they could have, what, 10 or 12 different versions, none of which would have the same question on it. Okay. So, anything else? Okay, as we get farther down in a couple more weeks, we'll go through some of this stuff in this lady's a little bit more, but right now... Other than, since you have off next week, yeah. then I want you to go through all the stuff that we've Learn all from the, the stuff. beginning until now. Yeah, that's Find a, it. That's a great time to do that. All the stuff. Put it, put the marks next to the questions and go back and try to do those again. And again, some of them might be memorizing. And if you say, now this is a brute memory, just put that one over on a separate piece of paper because it's one place to go and study for it. Okay, let's go back to, we were in section five. And let's see what that section was called. Frequencies. 
and we had covered these kind of things about Hertz, that, HF, DHF, UHF, and by now you've probably memorized what all these mean. And then we covered wavelengths, the meters, and we told you that certain amateur bands, we call them by their meter name, which is another problem. And we told you also which class of licenses have which things, nothing to memorize there. And we, we got to number 10, and this is what we did. So what number 10 said was, we'll just do that when we get on, we'll keep going. Somewhere at the point. So number 10 said, if I have a frequency of this, what meter band am I in? And the answer is, I'm in this meter. Now, here's the problem. To get that answer, you either have to memorize the answer, or you have to memorize that set of numbers. It's one or the other. Now, here was the other way to do it. How did you get meters? You divide frequency in megahertz into 300. Well, 52 into 300 is roughly six. What you'll find out is when you read the answers to this question, even though this is like 5.98 something, it's close to six, and of the four answers, only one of them will be anywhere near six. Okay, so that's an easy way to get to these without memorizing all this stuff. Divide this into 300, it's roughly two. Good, so that's one way to do all these, okay? Okay, so we were, that was our last sheet. Now, it turns out, emissions, what are emissions? Well, emissions are, am I on AM, am I on FM, am I, there are dozens and dozens of emissions, am I doing Morse code? What kind of emissions are you allowed to use with your license technician? And there's, there's dozens and dozens of emissions we'll talk about and what they are later. The answer is all, okay, except for one of these, one of these funny little bands here, called the 219 to 220, that question right there, TAD D05, says on that band, the only emissions we can use are the data mode. What's a data mode? It's a mode where there's only zeros and ones. Okay, so we can actually have, we actually have data modes. We'll talk about modes later. But basically all, now why do I just give you all? Because in the question pool, they never specifically tell you the answer is all, but there's no question that says all. Okay, they never, never, never tell you that. But a little later on, I'll tell you what some of, some of the more important ones are that are in your test. But that's the only question I got right now. On that one being there, it's only data, okay? Okay, the last thing we need to know is how much power are you allowed to transmit? Well, <clears throat> they never tell you. See, in the old days of amateur radio, the question pool would tell you. Now they don't tell you anymore. Here's the general answer for what it's worth, but there's no questions here. You can transmit up to 1,500 watts of power. If you use these radios, five. There's only five watts of power in here. The radio I have on the table there, is 100 watts. Now, on the data one, I don't know what the answer is, they don't tell us. But again, there's nothing here to memorize, okay? So don't worry about memorizing anything that's here. Okay, it says on amateur license allow us to transfer to various amateur bands, right? Those are the range of frequencies, and use specific types of emissions, Morse code, AM, FM, and a bunch of other ones. The FCC also defines which types of emissions can be used in various parts of each band. Bands that go from one frequency to this frequency, the FCC will say, oh, at these frequencies you can only use Morse code. Uh, at these frequencies you can talk on a microphone. And they actually tell us. And then they also tell us by which class of license we have, which ones I can do, okay? So here's, the, here's their examples. So it says the technician class license will have restricted sub-bands. What's a sub-band? Well, here's a band of frequencies. A sub-band is one portion, just a portion. So here's an example. In the six meter band, how big is the band? Well, it goes from 50 to 54. Let me go back and chart. 50 to 54, oh, okay. But from 50 to 50.1, no FM mode, can't use this mode, okay? Another question over here will tell you that, uh, oh, by the way, in that piece of subband, you can only use, Morse code, okay? Now if you're, say, I'm never gonna use Morse code, oh, then you'll never be able to use that part of the band, that's all. See, it's restricted to people who like Morse code. Two meter band.